What's up guys, Jake Rudin Tech here, and today we're going to talk about how you can test your power supply to ensure it's working properly. Alrighty guys, so this is a technique you can use to test a brand new power supply or a power supply you want to troubleshoot that's in an existing PC. So if you guys want to use this technique in an existing PC or one you're just building, um, I recommend only plugging in the 24 pin or your motherboard cable and making sure no other components are plugged in and I have a reason for that and I'll explain here in a little bit why exactly that is. So just a few things you'll need. You'll obviously need a power supply. That's kind of a given. Um, you're going to need a motherboard cable. In this case this is a 24 pin. So you'll need that. You'll need your AC power cord. And then you're going to need a jumper of some sort and a lot of power supplies these days do include one. Luckily with this EVGA power supply it gives us a jumper. Um, if you don't have one they are pretty cheap on Amazon so you can pick one up. Something like that. Or if you don't want to do that you can also use the paperclip method which we'll talk about here in a little bit. So this is a pretty simple procedure. So all I'm going to do to start it off is just take my... I'm going to start plugging in my cables. In this case, we're just going to plug in our 24 pin. So I'm going to go ahead and hook that up to this power supply. That's hooked up. Then I'm going to take my AC power cord. Plug that into your power supply. And we can go ahead and plug that in. I suggest, I would recommend just plugging it into a regular outlet. I have this little power brick here I'm going to plug into. And make sure too before you do this, just make sure the power supply is in the off position. So then we're going to take our jumper. We're just going to plug it right onto the 24 pin. So it'll clip in like that. And then what you want to do is you just want to view the fan on here. Because when we go ahead and jump this, the power supply will power on and you'll see the fan spinning and that's how you'll know your power supply is working properly. Um, if you have a power supply like this EVGA Supernova, it does have an eco mode. Just ensure that that's off because in eco mode a lot of times the fan won't spin. So then I'm just going to hit the on switch. Here, click, and we can see that the fan has powered on. So that's pretty much it, guys. Like I said, it's a very simple procedure to test your power supply, and it's super helpful. Um, one thing to note, I don't know the manufacturers offhand, but I have heard there's some manufacturers of power supplies that when you try to use the jump method, they the fan won't spin, and they won't appear to be on because they're not under any sort of load. So the best thing to do in that case would be to plug in maybe like a Molex peripheral, like a fan, um, something like that to test it. And then it should power on then. I'm not sure which manufacturers those are, but that is a case I've heard of. Alrighty guys, so if you don't have a jumper, you can use the paperclip method. So basically you're just gonna jump the pin number 16 and number 17. You're gonna connect those two. And it works just the same as you can see on here. And basically your pin number 16 is going to be your um, PSU power on cable. And then number 17 is a ground. So you just want to bridge the connection between those two. And that's basically all these jumpers are doing too. Alrighty guys, and like I mentioned earlier, I am going to explain why I don't recommend plugging in other components when testing a power supply like this. You can, and the whole object of the jumper is to tell the motherboard that nothing's hooked up to it and it jumps the power. So the PSU will run itself and then if any Molex peripherals like sometimes a water pump or fans, they'll also run too. But the main reason why I don't recommend plugging in your components when testing your power supply, especially on a new PC. That's kind of the main reason, is kind of the story, I'm going to go through it and break it down as best as I can. When I was building my water cool PC, what had happened was I hooked up everything, I had my water pump in, I would go to jump it, 
to get my water pump running to start running fluid through the system and nothing would happen I would hear a click and nothing um, a couple other troubleshooting things I did I did have my motherboard cable plug straight into the motherboard instead of using a jumper and I turned it on and the motherboard RGB lights would come on so at that point I did think my power supply was okay but then from there um, it still wouldn't the system wouldn't power on so it wouldn't use the peripherals which in that case was my water pump and then also it wouldn't power on long story short I had a bad cable in the mix and the power supply itself knew that I had a cable in the wrong spot or cables were mispinned for that reason it wouldn't allow itself to turn on so there are lots of faulty mechanisms in these power supplies so if you do run into an issue like that where you have a cable in the wrong spot the mother or the power supply basically says I'm not going to turn on and that is all in safety to protect your components in your system which is a really good thing it can make troubleshooting a little bit harder so that's why I recommend if you're just testing the power supply just use your motherboard cable and you can plug in the rest of the stuff after just to ensure that your power supply is okay so that's pretty much all there is to it I definitely recommend this method if you just purchase a new power supply or like I said earlier if you have a PC that is just won't turn on and having some issues it's always good to run a test like that just to make sure that your power supply is in working order and it's you don't know, go buying parts first when the power supply is actually working it's definitely good to start at some of the simpler things and then work your way to the more complex things when troubleshooting um, and this is also i definitely recommend using the jumper method when if you have a water cooled system and you're looking just to prep the system first or just fill it with fluid um, I definitely recommend doing the jumper method. That way you don't fire up your PC and you're rushing to fill your reservoir back up because that pump's sucking all the water through faster than you can refill it. So this is nice where you can just flip the power supply switch on and off whenever you need to, to fill your loop. And that way it's not a mad rush where you're trying to keep up with the amount of water that the system's running through and you don't have to worry about burning up your pump or any other components. Alrighty guys, well thanks for watching. I hope this helped you out in troubleshooting your power supplies and you can use this for future use on any new PC builds you might have or troubleshooting. Um, if it helped you guys out, please leave a thumbs up and if you want to see more tech related content and PC hardware related content, um, be sure to subscribe. And as always guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.